This video shows one possible solution to lesson three, practice exercise B, which calculates the number of cities in the data set that have at least two park and ride facilities using selections in ArcGIS. It also uses an update cursor to update a field indicating whether the city has at least two park and rides. At the beginning of the script is very similar to practice exercise A. Lines four through eight are pretty familiar from that exercise. In lines nine and 10, I'm setting up variables to refer to a couple of fields I'm gonna use. Part of the exercise is to update a field called has two park and rides to either true or false. So I'm setting up a variable for that. In line 10, I'm setting up a variable for the city FIPS code. We're gonna be querying each city one by one. So we need to have a field that has unique values for each city. We could use a city name, but that might be dangerous in the event that you've got a data set where two, two cities happen to have the same name. So we use the FIPS code instead. In lines 11 and 12, I'm setting up counters that I'm gonna to use to count the number of cities that have at least two park and rides, and then the total number of cities, respectively. In line 15, I'm starting out by making a feature layer of just the park and ride facilities. This should be familiar from the previous exercise where the first parameter I pass in is the path to the park and ride data set. And the second parameter is a name that I wanna use for the feature layer object that I'm creating. In line 18, I'm opening an update cursor on the city boundaries feature class. So within this cursor, I'm gonna loop through each city and select the number of park and ride facilities that occur in each city, count them up. So I'm gonna be working with two fields in this cursor, the city ID string field and the park and ride field. At this point, it might be helpful to take a look at what we're doing conceptually in ArcGIS Pro. The first step is to, we're gonna be selecting by attributes on the city boundaries layer and we're gonna be selecting based on the FIPS field. Here I'll plug in a, uh, the value associated with Seattle. Okay, and I'll run that. And that selects the city boundaries feature pertaining to Seattle. And then with that feature selected, we can use it in a select by location where we are selecting park and ride features that intersect features in city boundaries, and it's gonna use just that selected feature. And so there you see the park and rides within Seattle are selected. And at that point, I could count them up to see how many there are. And basically, we're gonna be doing this same process for every city in the city boundaries uh, feature class. Uh, move on to the next city, do the processing for that city, and so on and so on. As you might imagine, uh, that's a process that could take uh, a few seconds to, to complete. So getting back to the script, um, here we are at line 18. Uh, we're creating this cursor, which we give a name of city rows. And uh, then we can loop through each city uh, returned by the cursor. So that's what we're doing on line 19 with that for loop. On line 21, we get the FIPS code for the city that's currently, currently being looked at by the cursor. We're using zero inside the square brackets here because that's the index position of the uh, city ID string field that we put in the tuple when we created the update cursor. That was the first item in the tuple, so it has an index position of zero. On line 22, we're setting up a string to query for that particular city. So we need the uh, field name equals city ID. The city ID has to be in single quotes because it's, it's a string. So we use string concatenation to plug the field name and the city ID into a string expression. Once we have that string, we can make a feature layer that has just that one city in it. We, the way we do that is in line 25. Uh, we call in the make feature layer tool again, but instead of passing two parameters here, we're gonna pass three. 
Well, the first two are going to be the same as before. Uh, we plug in the path to the data set. We assign a name for the feature layer object. And in this case, we're going to call that feature layer current city layer. But then the third parameter is that query string that we just created on line 22. And that's going to cause our feature layer to have just one city in it. So now we're going to do the location selection on line 30 to select just the park and rides that are contained by that one city. The parameters here should be uh, pretty intuitive if you have that understanding of how the selection is working, where just one city boundary is selecting a subset of park and rides. So at that point, you can call the uh, get count tool and figure out how many park and rides were just selected. So that's what's going on on line 33. Remember uh, on line 34 uh, that you have to use uh, zero in square brackets to get at the actual count value, uh, which is a, is a string, and then use the int function to convert the string into an integer. We saw that in practice exercise A. So in the end, what you have in line 34 is uh, that variable called num selected park and ride. That's the number of park and ride facilities that fell within whatever the current city is in the cursor. So line 37 uh, is doing a check to see if that number is greater than or equal to two. And if it is, then we're going to assign a value of true to that has, park, has two park and ride uh, field. So that's where we, using our cursor, uh, go to the uh, first item in the tuple, actually the second item, but it has an index position of one, and we set that equal to true. And we don't want to uh, forget to call the update row method, so that's uh, so that the change we made, just made gets applied to the data set. Then the next thing we do is we want to update our counter variable. We want to add one to the counter um, to account for that, uh, that city that, that does have two park and rides. Keep in mind that we're doing this selection of park and rides for every city in the city boundaries feature class. On each pass through the loop, we want to create the current city layer feature layer, each time having it refer to a different city. We can't create a feature layer that already exists from the previous iteration of the loop so associated with the try block, we have a finally block that uh, deletes the current city layer feature layer. We also increment the number of cities we've counted by one in this finally block. After the loop, we want to clean up the other objects that have locks on our data. That means using the delete tool on the park and ride layer feature layer and a Python del statement to kill the objects held in the city and city rows variables. So notice there's a lot of levels of indentation here. And uh, remember that getting this, this indentation right is a critical part of coding in Python. This try block needs to be uh, indented with respect to line 19 so that it's considered part of the loop. The finally block needs to be indented at the same level as the try block in order to be associated with that try block. So after doing all the cleanup, now we're going to calculate the percentage of cities that have at least two park and rides. Now you can't divide by zero, so we're doing a check on line 56 for that. But if everything checks out okay, uh, which it would unless you have a major problem with your data set, uh, we go ahead and line 57 and uh, run some division to divide the number of cities with two park and rides uh, by the total number of cities and multiply by 100. So in lines uh, 59 and 60, uh, we have a little bit of error handling in the event that you uh, don't have any cities. Uh, otherwise, we'll calculate the percentage and report it on lines 57 and 58. 